Esto es Frecuencia EMA. Bueno, déjame ver por dónde empiezo. Saludos amigos y bienvenidos a la segunda temporada de Frecuencia EMA. Yo soy Emanuel Márquez del blog Easy Endurance. Y si me sigues desde hace algún tiempo, sabrás que gran parte de la cobertura de mi blog es al deporte del atletismo. La entrevista que escucharán a continuación es el resultado de más de un año de trabajo y gestiones. Pero por fin llegó el gran día. Hoy converso con la corredora olímpica de 100 metros con vallas, Jasmine Camacho Quinn, y con ella discuto sus raíces boricuas por parte de su madre María, natural de Trujillo Alto, su caída en la semifinal olímpica en 2016 en Río de Janeiro y la transición a ser una atleta profesional en el año 2018. También le cambiamos un poco el tono a la conversación y charlamos sobre sus tatuajes, sus gustos en la música y preferencias de comida. Finalmente hablamos de la relación con su hermano Robert Quinn, quien es un destacado jugador en la NFL en los Estados Unidos, sus problemas de peso, las metas para este nuevo ciclo olímpico y la Liga Diamante de la IAF, donde acaba de debutar. La entrevista es totalmente en inglés, pero no se preocupen que pronto haré una transcripción de la misma en español que estará disponible en Easy Endurance. Recuerda visitar nuestro blog easyendurance.wordpress.com y también nuestro fanpage en Facebook Easy Endurance para más entrevistas, artículos originales y cobertura de eventos y además recuerden dejarnos una valoración de 5 estrellas donde quiera que escuchen este podcast para seguir llegando a más personas. Ahora sí, sin nada más que decir, vamos a sprintear con la corredora puertorriqueña Jasmine Camacho Queen en frecuencia. Emma, nos fuimos. ¡Yu! Saludos amigos de Frecuencia Emma. Hoy estamos en una super edición especial del podcast. Conversamos con la atleta olímpica en 100 metros con vallas por Puerto Rico, Jasmine Camacho Quinn. Jasmine, how's it going? Thank you for accepting my invite. Um, how you doing? Doing great. Just excited to be back in Puerto Rico and see everybody and see everybody. Do you come here often, or, I mean, or just for a competition or professional, you know, stuff? Um, I've been able to come, like, at least once a year. Um, usually in June, that's when I have a little bit of free time. <laughs> But uh, now, you know, the professional life is different, so I get to come when I can. <laughs> um, usually when you here in Puerto Rico, what's your favorite thing to do? Do you like, like, I, I mean... Going to the beach, I think, it should mm. be number one. But any, <laughs> anything else? Um, I mean, just the atmosphere here, being able to go and eat the <laughs> Puerto Rican food, and and you know, just to get to get to go out and enjoy yourself with your friends and stuff like that, and see family. Um, obviously, you were born in the United States, mm. um, South Carolina, right? But your mother is Puerto Rican. She's from Trujillo Alto, mm. I think. And your mother and your father is American. Um, were you ever faced with the decision of which country you you were going to represent? Um, like when I, I mean, when I started running track, like I didn't know that I could represent Puerto Rico. Like if I knew that in high school, like I would have chose to run for Puerto Rico, like. But I didn't know, and nobody told me. So, um, I mean, my freshman year in college, my coach actually said that I could, and that was news to me, like, that I'm able to do that. And called my mom and talked to her a little bit, and she was like, she wanted me to do it. So I was just like, I think this is the best thing for me to do, represent Puerto Rico, and, and at least bring a lot of more support for, you know, the track side on. And we can actually... We have, we've been getting more athletes in, since, I, yeah. since I came. So I think it was a good thing we could actually like build our program, our Puerto Rican track program. Um, was your father ever kind of, you know, I don't know, uncomfortable with the decision of representing Puerto Rico? Mm -mm. No, he um, he fully supported me. Whatever I want to do, like, that, that's my decision. And he wasn't, as long as he gets to see me run, he doesn't, he doesn't care. Right. Um. I remember in an interview in 2016, you mentioned that you wanted to keep learning about Puerto Rico. Well, it's three years um, later. Mm -hmm. What have you learned from your Puerto Rican roots? Um, I mean, I think from the interview, I was I didn't really get to, I didn't want to go into detail just because of um, just what my mom went through, I guess. Like, you know, she moved to the States, you know, with her 
with her dad and when she was nine years old. So like, um, in, in the interview, I remember saying, you know, I finally get to be my mom's mom's side of the family, like my grandmother's side, because I never actually got to meet them. But I knew my grandfather's side, like I knew his side. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. like I knew I know my Puerto Rican side, but I know one part of my Puerto Rican side. I never got to meet, you know, my mom's mom's side. <laughs> so like, um, I think that was a little bit confusing. A lot of people probably thought I didn't know nothing at all. I did know. It's just. I just didn't get to meet my family here in Puerto Rico. I family I met is in New Jersey, like North Carolina. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, have you discovered anything in particular about you that uh, that t tells you that you're in fact Puerto Rican? Like, do you like the food? Um, do you curse? You know, the cursing words in in, in Spanish or anything like that? Um. <laughs> I mean, this, I, I grew up, like, I got my mom, like, whatever she said, you know, what she cooked, what my, my family cooked, like, I, of course, I ate it, like, um, I mean, I just, I feel like I have, I have two different sides of me, I have a Puerto Rican side, and I got, you know, my, my dad, the country side, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um. It's impossible to talk about you without mentioning um, 2016 in Rio, um, what happened there. I know I don't know if, it, if it's still painful for you to remember that, um, but can you take us through that trip uh, in the 100 uh, hurdles and, you know, the accident? Um, I mean, I ran, we had one round and I won my heat and then... We had semifinals, and I was I wasn't nervous. Like I was really excited. It was my first Olympics, and um, I mean I didn't think that would happen. Um, so it was that you clip your heels over the hurdle. I, I don't even remember. <laughs> I just yeah. knew like I, I think I hit my trail leg, and once I hit my my trail leg, it kind of made me. I knew the next hurdle I was about to hit with my knee leg. I couldn't get. I couldn't recover. And, um, I mean, when that happened, like, of course it was heartbreaking because it's the Olympics. Like, yeah. you mess up at the Olympics, you have to wait four years again. Uh -huh. um, and I, I knew for a fact, like, I missed out on the medal. Like, I was like, that, that was really heartbreaking. But I see it, you know, now that I'm years ahead now, um, you know, I was so focused on if I do medal, I'm going pro. You know, and I just see that as you weren't ready. Like you needed to come across something like that for you to, for you to even just understand a little bit, like more. And I mean, I was able. I returned to school, and I was able to get my degree. I, I graduated, so um, and won more titles on top of that. <laughs> NCAA. So um, I just see it as that was a learning experience, and I, I pretty, I learned from that. Um. I have to say I never seen um someone so devastated after a race like immediately after you stumble your face change your demeanor um how do you come back emotionally from from something like that um for me like like I said before like I was 19 I was 19 at the time like I was young I was just like there's people that are way older than me that are just now experiencing their first Olympics and they're they're happy to be here whether it goes good or bad like they're just happy to be here um but you have winning expectations mm -hmm. you have metal expectations mm -hmm. so I mean with that what yeah things were expected you know there was expectations and stuff like that but um I think mainly for me like um You call it embarrassing. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was embarrassing, I think, because of the expectations, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you were obviously one of the better athletes there, and you were performing well during the semi. So I guess that's what make it so much difficult for you to handle it. Um, at that same Olympics, one of our other athletes, Javier Coulson, mm -hmm. had a uh, yeah, false start, and it was... You know, it, it was it, it was so tough to handle. You know, mm -hmm. two of our biggest hope, mm -hmm. um, having such difficulties. Um, do, do you talk to him uh, during that period at all? 
Um, what happened first? I'm I'm, I'm confused. I oh. think I I ran before him. You ran before. Uh huh. And um, I think that happened after. I don't remember too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I'm, after my race, I kind of went blank. Like I was like, hmm. I'm gonna just sit in the room and stay away. But um, um. Because I'm thinking maybe you guys um, could support each other through such a difficult um, time lapse. We, we seen each other okay. until like we got on the plane. <laughs> All right. It was one of those. I don't remember. Like like I said, like after that happened, it was just, it was a blur from there. I don't, I don't even remember too much of anything happening after my race. Like I just remember getting on the plane and going back. But I remember you saying that you won't let that experience determine the rest of your career. Mm -hmm. So you you um you overcome that. Um, how was that 2017 season for you? I mean, it was still it was hard for me because like after the Olympics, like you know, I was I was a first just finished up my freshman year in college, and that was the longest season I've ever <laughs> ever had. So like I pretty much I've been training and running for a year at that point and um I had like two week break, two week break. I was I was so tired and I had to come back and I knew right there I wasn't ready like I was like I'm not mentally ready just because I'm still trying to recover from this and my body's tired like I need I really that was a shock to my body <laughs> it was something new and um I mean, from the jump, like, I knew it wasn't going to be the best season for me because I was, like, I was just, I was battling, you know, depression from, from that situation. Of course. And, um, school was just not going good for me <laughs> at the time. Um, it was a tough combination. It was, it was just too much. And I tried to stay strong. And that season, I shocked myself for even running 12.58. And getting second, like I barely lost, and I think that that was that was really much a shock to me because I was just like all year I haven't I didn't run anything fast. I think I was like twelve seven, twelve eight. I was battling weight issues, like I didn't want to be out there. I was injured, so uh, the fact that I came out there and ran twelve five, like, and um, was, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, the fact that I was like, you know, battling. All of those things still came out there and real ran twelve five. Like I, I mean, it did. I was upset. I got second, of course, because I was coming back to defend my title. But um, but you got it back. You got it back last year, mm -hmm. though. So sweet, uh, yeah. sweet revenge, I guess. Yeah, I knew. I knew right there. Like me losing, I don't take that. I don't take that well. I don't, <laughs> I don't like losing. Uh, you know, it's it just it's. No, that's not in me. That's not. It's just how I am as a as a competitor. Like, how do, how, do, how do you compare your hurdles with your two hundred? Do you? Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> you don't like I never liked the two hundred. Um, I knew for a fact I could have ran faster than what I was doing in college, but when you're running four events. Pretty much every weekend, like there's, there's, I can't, I can't, like I'm tired. <laughs> like it was, you it was just like, can't endure it all, 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 all the time. All right, yeah, yeah. Right. So like, um, I felt like if I had breaks, then I'd be able to, I'd be able to run the 200. If I just came with distance, like I could just, I could run the 200. Like it doesn't matter. Um, but doing so many events. Stuff it was, and then trying to save energy for the four by four. Do you feel like you're one of those athletes that need um, more time in between races? Um, uh, or I, it was just too much. The schedule was. Just I wouldn't say it was the timing wise, but it it was just too much altogether. When you're, you know, you're at regionals, and I had six events in 24 hours, like. <laughs> you know that's that's a lot. I had to do two rounds of the two hundred, two rounds of the hurdle. I mean, yeah, of the hurdles, and then I had a four by one, and then I'm on the fastest leg of a four by one, and the fastest leg of a four by four. Like that's that's just tiring to the body. Then you get to nationals, and you have to run all four of these in a day again, and then come back and do it again. Like if you make finals for that Saturday, it was just. It was just becoming too much, and it was like I can't really. I feel like I can't peak 
because <laughs> I'm trying to put together this, this, and do this, and do this, so... That's interesting, interesting considering that you um, did long jump in high school, right? Mm -hmm. So why didn't you continue in the long jump? Uh, my coach didn't want me to. Okay. Um, I mean, I did go to college for hurdles and long jump. Right. But I guess he's seeing something else on me. He's like, oh, well, I think you should sprint. Like, <laughs> right. I was like, Whatever. I wanted to long jump, of course, because I was doing it in high school. But as the time go, like, went on, like. I'm glad I did. Like, I don't think I would be <laughs> able to handle that either. Wow, that would yeah. be that would be nasty, and, mm -hmm. you know, handling all that. Um, you mentioned um, weight issues, mm -hmm. um, and it's something that I, I've read about with you. Um, do you particularly gain weight very quickly? Um, I mean, like, I have like my my daddy's genes, as I said before. <laughs> so, like, we're all if you see. Because I see you right now, and in, in pictures, you look thicker. And, and <laughs> for some reason right now, you're slim. Like, you, you can be a middle-distance runner. I wouldn't even notice. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what kind of weight issues we're talking about, <laughs> but let's just get this out of the way. Yeah, like, um, I just, I guess I'd say, like, I have bad eating habits. So <laughs> I eat, uh, I like bread. I like croissants and man i, I like you know, i the, love those you know, <laughs> pizza and you um, like pizza no i mean i like no? i i won't go out of my way to get pizza like i can eat pizza every day i can't we had it in elementary school every friday and I was <laughs> elementary middle school. Oh, you're just tired like, you're done for life <laughs> yeah it's like every friday we have that in schools so what like, about tacos <laughs> um now that I'm in Texas. I'll, <laughs> I'll get like a fresh taco. Okay. I don't. I don't like Taco Bell. That's, All right. I mean, I you know I eat it, but like you're breaking my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I eat tacos though, but I I don't know. I just like we have a bunch of food trucks, so I you know get a taco from there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I haven't. I don't know. I probably eat Taco Bell too much as a kid too, so I'm just kind of over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. In 2018, uh, you took a big step, mm -hmm. which was becoming a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. um, what was the biggest um, adaptation that you have to make in, in that transition period? Uh, I mean, my situation was pretty different. Uh, my coach left Kentucky. Oh. Um, which I already had thought, like, I had thought about going pro, and I was... I wasn't pretty much sure. Like, I was like, I didn't do what I wanted to do. I wanted to break a college record. I missed that by point zero one. Like, it was just situations. Like, okay, last year at Nationals, I lost by point zero one. I missed the college, like, the collegiate record by point zero one. I still have another year to get it. But, you know, with my coach leaving and I, not, I don't know who's coming in to Kentucky, like, it was kind of just a, a one of those. I just reacted. Like, my coach leaving, I'm leaving too. But then my coach, you know, he was just like, you know, you're not coming to Texas yet, like, you need to get your degree first, like, yeah, get your degree, so, um, I was in Kentucky until, you know, I graduated this past December, and, um, what's your degree there? Community and Leadership Development, I never really got to, like, do what I wanted to do, yeah. but that's because of track, like, takes so much time, yeah, so there was no way I could have even, I would have to choose, right, much. so I was just like, oh, I can take an easy route, like, whatever. It, it worked out for me. I still community leadership. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to work with kids, or what's your? Main I mean, goal? I have thought about that, like being a mentor t for kids and stuff like that. Because me growing up, you know, I, you know, I guess you are already <laughs> a, a, a role model for mm -hmm. for thousands of kids. Um, so it will be like a step further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought about that because I did do with my. We did have to do like a practicum, pretty much, and I worked with like middle school kids. And um, just being able to talk to them and, and try to get them to understand. Middle school kids, that's a whole different. That's that's tough. <laughs> I'm a, I'm they're figuring themselves out right there. I'm a preschool physical education teacher, mm -hmm. so I, I know what you're talking about. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, times are changing. But, <laughs> but, like, I you know, I got the experience right there. And I was like, okay, like, I could definitely help out some kids that, you know. That do need the help. I didn't have that. I felt like if I did have that, um, more of like mentors and stuff like that, 
I wouldn't have gotten in trouble that I didn't get into, <laughs> you know, when I was younger. So I think, like, I can be that for the kids so they won't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to your coach, mm -hmm. um, how long have you been working with him? Since I started college. Since you started college. Do you feel like you wouldn't be able to run the same with anyone, anyone else? Um, I mean, in this situation, like, this is who I've been with in college. So, to and, and he's helped me run my 12.40 and, you know, my fast time. So, when in a situation, like, especially me being a hurdler, it's not easy coming across a good hurdle coach and being able to trust that coach. This is a world championship year. I don't need to go with somebody that, that might not have the best interest for me or something like that. So... Um, and because you are uh, such a high level too, mm -hmm. like it wouldn't make sense, you know, working with anyone. Yeah. So like that whole process, it was. I mean, who knows? But for me, like this is who I've been with for this many years, and it was just a trust thing. Like. And then Jasmine, financially, mm -hmm. I guess the changes mm -hmm. everything, right? Because now you. You're an independent woman, mm -hmm. not that you weren't before, mm -hmm. but not, you know, no scholarship, no mm -hmm. anything. Um, has that been a change? Um, I'm still the same person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still the same person. Um, I mean, that's the only thing that changed is that I give my, I'm not on scholarship anymore. Like, I'm not in school anymore. So, um, is it nice being sponsored by, uh, by Nike or being a Nike athlete? Definitely. I mean, this is things we look forward to in college, like wanting to be sponsored. Like, and we finally, now it's finally here. I think um, a lot of things that, um, I'm not going to say all athletes, but, you know, I'm going to just, for, I'm going to just use myself as an example. Like, you work for this, and when you get it, sometimes you lose focus. Right. And it's like, you you have your money, but you're forgetting that you can lose this. Like, right. You need to keep take it for granted. Yeah, right. So you need to you, you got to keep running. Like you gotta you gotta keep doing what you've been doing in college. You can't just get comfortable because it's such a fine line mm -hmm. in between having it all and then losing it mm -hmm. all. You know. So um, I think that's that's just my biggest problem. But I also started back training in January, so like. I've been feeling rushed a little <laughs> bit and haven't really had time, but I think I think it's coming together now. Um, talking about this year, 2019, um, you already have your international debut at the Diamond League, right? Mm -hmm. You went to Doha. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell me about that experience? I, I, I'm thinking you're eager to go back to the Diamond League, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that experience for me, like in Doha, It, it was a first time experience. Like I, I try to tell myself like, oh, like I've I've been to to the Olympics. To the Olympics. <laughs> right, so I right, shouldn't right. be uh, shouldn't be nervous. But then I was still nervous because I'm racing against girls I I looked up to, like in high school and stuff. Like these are girls like wow. I looked up to, and I'm lining up next to them. Mm -hmm. So like you got that right there. Like you're finally met. <laughs> like it was hard to accept. And then um, and then not only that like. You're like, I better bring my A game because, you know, these, these girls are, ain't playing with me. They uh -huh. playing no games. <laughs> But not only that, though, like, the whole, you know, if somebody's making a lot of noise when you're getting in the blocks and stuff, I was used to, the, the officials would be like, stand up, like, get them calm, like, be quiet or something. That didn't happen. So, like, if, if you look in the video, I kind of took off after everybody because <laughs> I was expecting them to say stand up. Oh, okay. So that right there, I learned, like, don't pay attention to what's going on. You know, like, just listen to the starter. And so I learned that right there. And um, are you happy with your time? I mean. Considering you, know, you started just January. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, I have to keep telling myself, like, you know, you have to pretty much run yourself into shape right now. Like, I have to compete. And that's going to have to be my way because I started so late. And, um, I mean, I'm not used to that because of me in college, like, I was opening up faster than 12, 85. Like, right. I was doing that. So, um, that was, was That was like a warm-up for you. Mm -hmm. 12, 80 was, was a warm-up, mm -hmm. I guess. So, like, 
I started getting like pretty much frustrated and I felt like what, what's going on like what but I think that was just a, that was a learning experience like experience for me because I was finally able to one I got to race against them so I got that out of the way like, <laughs> that's that's out the way and it was a whole group of them <laughs> so like I'm like all right this is finally out the way I raced against them you know now you can you can calm down <laughs> and, 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 and I, I think you got to scout the the location for the WAF um, World Championship, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like a win-win situation because mm -hmm. you're probably gonna be there. Mm -hmm. So nice, I guess. Yep. Finally, I got to see how that'll be. So, um, Jasmine, you have a brother um, named Robert, mm -hmm. which is an NFL star. Mm -hmm. um, What's your relationship like um, with your brother? We talk all the time. <laughs> That's my brother, like. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Uh, You text all, all day? Mm -hmm. That's my brother, like, I mean. Right. Um, <laughs> um, was he instrumental in your um, comeback after 2016 hard, hard moment uh, at Rio? Um, I mean, like. Because they, they, they don't have any Olympics, but maybe, mm -hmm. you know, they have playoffs, they have the Super Bowl, so maybe he can compare some tough moments with you? Uh, I w no, he didn't really compare anything. Like, he, he just said, like, I knew you had it. Like, I knew you would have medal. You know, like, it's okay. You know, um, yeah, that was, that was, that was it? shake it off. You'll be all right, girl. Like, that's how he is. Like, you'll be all right, girl. Is he like a cold person that, you know, doesn't show much emotion at all? Um, I mean, like, how me and my brothers are, like, we kind of are, like, we'll, <laughs> we'll say mean things to each other, but, like, in a loving sense, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's just how we are. Like, we're, we're siblings, and we're all kind of, You know, yeah, like that. You also have a um, couple tattoos on your body, mm -hmm. and one of those is on your bicep. Mm -hmm. You have uh, the island of Puerto Rico with the Olympic rings. Mm -hmm. When do you get that? I got that right after Rio. I came and we flew back to Puerto Rico. I got it like the day, the day I got here. Like, well, you, you got it day. done here? I think it was my birthday or the day after my birthday. Like, We got back to Puerto Rico, and it turned my birthday. So, like, yeah, it might have been that day. I don't even remember. Maybe the day after, but I knew I got it, like, as soon as we got back here from Rio. Is it just a reminder that you got to the Olympics, or does it have any other more sentimental, emotional, um, deeper meaning? Yeah, of course. Like, I, find I got to represent Puerto Rico. That's why I have the, the island with the flag and, it, like, the colors. Right. You got it. And I have the rings in it, and that just lets you know that I'm a Puerto Rican Olympian. <laughs> like, if you see this, like, you know. So, um. I saw, like, a funny post on your Twitter account. Mm -hmm. Like, someone will be asking, like, you don't look like Puerto Rican. And, and, and then it goes, like, am I supposed to be, like, a part of Arroz con Gandules mm -hmm. or, or something like that? So, you just be showing everybody your bicep, like, flexing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, um. Uh, That's that's an issue. I think a lot of people like I came across a lot of people like that. I'll be like, you know, you don't look Puerto Rican. I'm like, what do you expect me to look like? <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you expect me to look like? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I guess it happens to um, Grace. Yeah, Claxton. Like, mm -hmm. I had her on the podcast, and she was like, "Man, I don't know." Everybody is gonna be like, "Are you Puerto Rican?" And then she starts, you know. Um, talking Spanish, speaking mm -hmm. in Spanish, and everyone is like, yo, where did I come from, you know? Mm -hmm. In terms of music, Jasmine, do you like anything in particular? I'm um, a huge hip-hop fan, mm -hmm. so, you know, you can mention, I, I think I'm ready. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm ready. Uh, it just all depends on my mood. Um, J. Cole? Yeah, like, I, I listen to J. Cole, of course. Um, It just depends on my mood at the moment. Like, if I'm feeling like, like, I'm gonna. <laughs> like, gangsta. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm gonna dance the mood, like, I'm gonna play some different, this type of music. If right, I, right. Yeah, like, it just, it just depends. <laughs> any, any salsa by chance? Like, <laughs> I mean, any, yeah, I any love, Caribbean flavor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Because my friends, like. I mean, you have to, you have to love Bad Bunny. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Don't get of course, it. Like, <laughs> of course, um, yeah. But uh, he's a part of it too. It just depends on my mood. If I'm if I'm want to listen to R and B, I'll listen to you know R and B. If I want to listen to rap, I will listen to rap, and you know, just everything. Mm-hmm. Just you, you you go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, but like knowing me, I I I always switch up my music. So if I'm like dancing, I'm in a dancing mood, I'll turn on like R and B right after. Like I get my feelings I'm sad <laughs> about something, and then I'm like, forget being sad. Like let me listen to some some rap music. For R and B, I go to Bryson Taylor. Taylor, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I I like that guy. Well, I listen to like the nineties. Like, oh, you yeah. go, you go like a little bit retro, mm-hmm. vintage Jasmine. Um, <laughs> Jasmine, um, we're finalizing this, but we got to talk about a couple um, big meetings you have from this summer on, um, mm-hmm. starting with the Pan American Games in Lima, Peru. Um, what are your expectations? Um, I mean, I've never been to Pan Am, so like, for me, like, I don't know. It, that's the problem, that you, you <laughs> went to the biggest stage, and, and then e- e- everything else is just <laughs> like, man, I don't know, Pan Am's. <laughs> But, like, now, like, you know, um, for me, like, my biggest focus is world championships. Right. Um, you know, going to Pan Am's, like, I feel like it'll just be, like, like a tune serious, up? but it'll be fun, too. Like a tune-up race mm-hmm. or, you know. Like, get to have fun somewhat. And, but, um, you know, like, for me, and I get that question a lot, like, Pan Am's, Pan Am's. Right, right, like, right. You know, my biggest focus is world championships. Like, this is my ex- like expectation. Like, this is my coach's expectations. Like, I'm training with the world record holders. So, like, I can't, you know, like, yeah. world championships is something that's, like, really big. And then you got the Olympics and world championships again. Like, so, um, you know, with Pan Am's, like, I see it. You know, it is. Yeah, like, yeah. It is what I it totally is. Like, get it. It is what it is. Like, I'm glad I get to run again like right, finally right. like mm-hmm. but um i mean for it's me, your like, fir- it's your first time wearing the national colors after rio mm-hmm. right so it's yeah, like well, a, i mean last year i was hurt though like yeah. i had a cyst in my knee and a strained hamstring that i was competing with you couldn't go to barranquilla to mm-hmm. central american no because my leg got worse and i was like i don't know what's i don't know what's going on like went and finally got checked and it was like yeah you have a cyst in your knee and a strained hamstring i was like Seasons over, really. like that's it for me. Um, the year before, I don't even remember World Championships. Yeah, yeah, World Championships. I was done. Like after after nationals, I was like, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Every every athlete I talk to um tells me the same like Pan Am's is just you know mm-hmm. not another meeting because mm-hmm. I I think it might be an A race for some of the guys but mm-hmm. for you guys that you know are shooting for it, Olympics mm-hmm. and 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 you know worlds so it doesn't seem like a such a big important race yeah um then obviously if everything goes according to plan and we hope. Um, that you are in the line for Tokyo 2020. Um, that would be like your, I don't know, full circle, mm-hmm. if, if you can call it like that. Um, do you dream about Tokyo? I do, because, of course, like, it's like a, what's the word, redemption? Is it redemption? Yeah, I, I mean, know, redemption like, could work. <laughs> it's like one of those I'm returning, like, okay, like, I already know, like, oh, four years ago, she um, she fell. Right. She was 19. She's coming back, like. I already know it's going to be something like that. and um, You're yeah. such a more mature athlete r- right now. Mm-hmm. So I think you you take better care of those details. I mean, and, and, mm-hmm. and to be honest, what happened to you can happen to anyone yeah. in a hurdler race that, you know, the, it's such a tight space, mm-hmm. such a fast race. It's just a millisecond and, and you're on the ground. Mm-hmm. So, I, I you know, I don't take it as, for me, it happened, it, you know, it felt bad, but it, it wasn't like a big mistake on your side, at least from the outside, that's what I can take, what I can say. Um, finally, um, Jasmine, and I really appreciate your time, taking your time um, to be on the podcast today. Um, what is, why is it such important for you to represent and do well for Puerto Rico? I mean, like, we, being a small island, like, you know, you, you have, 
I don't feel like there's not as much access and and like with the I'm speaking for the track side <laughs> for track and field, but like um, I just feel like this is in our blood. Like there's a lot of Puerto Ricans or people that are just you know even born in the states and that choose to represent USA. You know, like we have to. Let's 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 represent let's represent Puerto Rico. Like we can we can bring in, you know, better athletes and stuff like that to represent and I'm all about growing. Like I want I want us to be of course we're like a big happy family. Right? <laughs> But um Do you feel welcome here? I do. I do. Um I I do. I think people love you like 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 they like they have seen you race forever from mm -hmm. from being a little girl like people talk <laughs> about you like they want to hug you, you know? <laughs> like um I mean for me yeah like definitely like running for Puerto Rico is a small island we're bringing recognition to the island like to let people know like don't sleep on us because you know it's a small island like we we still we have it we're gonna bring it um And I think that's a that's something right there that can you know just bring us recognition and people can finally pay us attention and you know you go to the Olympics you don't you see all the big countries and stuff like that but when you have somebody from a small country upset somebody from a big country it's a shock to the world right so of course like it's gonna mean a lot to me and then I want to make the country proud you know like. We're this small, <laughs> competing against things this big, and um, and we beat you. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> and like, if we can defeat you like that, that means a lot. That means a lot, and it just lets you know, like, you know, don't sleep on us. <laughs> <laughs> I like that for the finish. Um, when's gonna be your next race, Jasmine? Tuesday, the 11th. The 11th. In Paris. Right. Yeah. Diamond leagues are hard to get in because they're doing this ranking, this new ranking system. So you got a couple of long flights coming coming up. Mm -hmm. um, so Jasmine, thank you very much again for being on the podcast. Um, we look forward to seeing you in the start line of mm -hmm. everything from Pan Am to Worlds to Olympics, and you know have that swagger <laughs> with that Puerto Rican colors. Um, you know we we support you. Puerto Rican people is behind you 100% and we wish you nothing but the best thank you gracias por escuchar Frecuencia EMA recuerda suscribirte a nuestro podcast para más episodios como este también visita nuestro blog en facebook.com Easy Endurance para más artículos originales videos y noticias